It's time! Oh yeah! It's time for Miss Lou Champion Sports Talk. Hey, these two guys when I had hair. <laughs> for me, it was just all about being coachable, being approachable, being a good team guy. And being what I'm supposed to be when I'm supposed to be. Where were they getting the hair from? I think they took it from his lower back. Okay. And, and they moved it to the top. <laughs> <laughs> With me, Ronnie Calhoun, and the legend, Joey Martin. It's entertaining, informative, and sometimes a little crazy. So sit back and enjoy the show. Hey guys, before we get started, we want to tell you about our awesome partners, Cyber Technology, Greg Vet Clinic, Hicks Chicks, Kenny Chesney's Blue Chair Bay Rum, and all of our awesome partners that you see on the screen right now. Make sure to do business with them and tell them Miss Lou Champion sent you. Hey guys, Ronnie Calhoun here with my man Joey Martin over here uh, doing LL Cool J voices uh, impersonation before we come on the air. <laughs> Out of nowhere. Um, another, check, the, check the out. <laughs> with another uh, episode of Champion Sports Talk. Missed you last week, brother. But yeah, last week. I feel like I hadn't seen you in a while. Cause uh, we, we, we skipped the balloon race week. and um, But um, we're, as always, we're brought to you by Magnolia Bluff Casino. Make sure to catch all the games down there. I went down uh, the other night and had some good food and watched one of the Monday night games. Fun times. And as always, we're driven by Sango GMC. Our buddy Mark Sanguinetti got to see him the other day and uh, hang out with him and Julie for a little bit. But go see his, him and his uh, champion team in Winsboro and Vidalia for all of your new and used car needs. Thank you to all of our awesome partners, including Concordia Sentinel, as always. Thank you. And, um, and lastly, thank you to all of our veterans and our military men and women serving all over the world. Um, so now that that's out of the way, <laughs> we got a champion. Uh, we got a champion show. Today. We do. I'm looking forward to it. I've never met Hayden before today. Uh, we got Hayden Wadsworth, former ACCS player, right. and uh, UL, was it ULM or ULM or was it U N L U? He was ULM. Yeah, I think it was Louisiana Monroe at that. Okay, yeah. I, I don't know when it switched over. It changed about three times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, we'll have him on in a few minutes. But the Indian to Warhawk. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they're more confused than Auburn. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, before we get Hayden over here. Um, let's go ahead and dive into the local scene. And okay. We're getting there, man. I'm man, it on. is almost playoff time. Mm -hmm. uh, Natchez took a lot, uh, tough loss last week. South Jones, 29-14. Bulldogs are 5-3 and three now, 1-1 one one district. Um, going to Florence tomorrow night. Um, last week, senior night at Fairty High, they played on Thursday night. And uh, – Handle Madison really easy. Mm -hmm. uh, Zai Alexander, a freshman running back, you're going to keep hearing over and over again through the years. He broke uh, Devontae Scott's record for a uh, junior high rushing. Mm -hmm. He had 99 yards, his best uh, best yet. So okay. look for a lot of 100 yard games out of him. Uh, Fairy goes to Oak Grove tonight. So two straight Thursday games, and that's a huge game. Is that because of the referee yeah. short? Uh, Bodega took it on the chin pretty good, 60 to nothing to Gina, and wasn't that close. Yeah. That yeah. was just 44 nothing in the first quarter. Ran the clock second quarter. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. Third quarter and fourth quarters, they started at eight minutes. And ran and, it. And ran it. Yeah. Took, turned off the play clock, and kudos to Gina. Yeah. They would take a minute before they ran a die play. So. Yeah. Class guys over there, and you know they yeah. they breast out about a hundred people. I was gonna say I, I talked to uh, to Josh's mother, and and I asked how big their team was as far as numbers, and she said man, they had like 80, 90 people on the sideline. Yeah. So it's just hard to compete with that, man. Oh, whenever yeah. whenever Vidalia is dressing thirty five kids, mm -hmm. and they're dressing eighty five, yeah, it's yeah. hard to compete, especially when you get an injury or two, and yeah. it just really makes things tougher. But yeah, but Josh just. Coach West, just keep plugging away and, and, and teaching the kids. And, that's it. Yeah, that's what you got to do. And they got homecoming tomorrow with uh, Marksville, mm -hmm. who has a really good quarterback. So, uh, uh, Devin Lavallee, I, you remember Chad Lavallee? Yeah. Played at LSU. Oh, man, Marksville. one of my favorite players all, yeah. all time. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they're kin somehow, but he's a quarterback and he's okay. a heck of an athlete. Uh, Delta Charter <laughs> went to Tinsall for their homecoming last uh -huh. week. Uh, won that game pretty easily. Uh, 48-12, and uh, Blake told me uh, it's kind of a strange game. They didn't have a PA announcer. Uh, the Newelton class of 1984, which when they before they combined with uh, St. Joe and Waterproof, they uh, he said they were 
having dance offs in the end zone during the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Between your LL Cool J's yeah, and dance offs in the end zone, I'm 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 confused. <laughs> dance offs, like oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he was thinking, what in the world's going on? <laughs> uh, Will Wiley, seven and nine passing for 157 yards. Good to see because. Will's been doing it on the ground, but you know, you get this time of year, you need to get more balance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, good game for them. ACCS secured a playoff spot, beating uh, St. Joe Greenville 30 to 16. And uh, of course, they've got Cathedral tomorrow. Cathedral <clears throat> uh, saw its playoff chances uh, hurt last week by Centerville 35 21. So that was their last home game. And uh, yeah. of course, they'll play AC. But uh, oh, yeah, Kobe Dillon at Southern. Mm hmm. They uh, beat Alcorn 24 to 14. He had 91 yards on 15 carries, so good for him. Uh, Trey Miner, Colin defeated Pearl River 24 17. He had 52 yards on 12 carries and a touchdown. Nice. Yes. And uh, Will Loy, that's Josh's uh, nephew, he got some playing time. He passed for 120 yards at Colin. So okay. DeMarco Blanton played at South, plays at Southwest. He had eight catches, 59 yards. And uh, like we keep saying, uh, that was a win over Hines. You know, uh, if y'all know somebody else, let us know. Cause we yeah. like yeah. getting these kids' names out there. That's right. Sounds like some local guys having some good years yeah. so far. Absolutely. So, you got anything else for us no, on the local right front? Here, right now. Okay. Well, we'll be right back. Uh, we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back with uh, Hayden Wadsworth. Playtime, game time. Anytime is a good time at Magnolia Bluffs Casino Hotel. Play to win our $50,000 Ace of Spades Progressive with drawings every Friday and Saturday through November 2nd. Score big wins at Magnolia Bluffs Casino Hotel. It's always a good time. Visit magnoliabluffscasino.com. Hey, Miss Lou, come visit us, Tom and Wright Granning at Go Martin on the Go Deli. Go Martin has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need. Located at the corner of Highland Boulevard and Highway 61 South in Natchez. Also, stop by Wardo's Po Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where everyone is family. Guys, Ronnie and Shannon here with Miss Lou Champion Spotlight. And we're here at our amazing partners, Greg Veterinary Hospital. Greg Veterinary Hospital has been providing comprehensive, reliable, cutting edge veterinary services to pets in the Miss Lou since 2002. They welcome pets of all shapes and sizes who are in need of emergency treatment or who require routine medical, surgical, and dental care. Dr. Greg and his team offer a long list of services including in-house laboratory diagnostics, digital x-ray, soft tissue, orthopedic surgery, dental care, extractions, laser surgery, laser therapy, preventative health, and wellness plans. And if you need grooming and boarding services, they do that too. So call Greg Vet today. It's Shannon with Miss Lou Champion Spotlight. If you like what we're doing, be sure to follow, like, share, and even comment on all our content. Also, visit MissLouChampions.com to sign up for our newsletter and to receive other information, as well as the opportunity to receive some awesome prizes. Thank you, Miss Lou, for your continued support, and as always, have a champion day. All right, guys, we are back with uh, Hayden Wadsworth. How are you, man? Doing well. How are you? Doing well. Good to meet you. Uh, yes, my first time to meet you. But Joey told me a lot about you, and uh, looking forward to hearing more about you. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, Joey, I'll let you lead us this okay. morning. Okay. How you feel? Well, mate, doing good? doing good, brother. Doing good. good. And Dustin's happy, so everything's good. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so main reason we asked Hayden to come on here is you played at ULM. Yes, sir. Uh, what years did you play? I got there in 2000 and I graduated in 2005. Okay. So. And uh, y'all had some rough years and rough games. We know. did. We did. You know, when I got there, um, Coach Keesler was our coach and uh, he wasn't there long. We we got a new coach and then we got another coach after that. Right. So it, it was kind of topsy-turvy for 
time I was there. Yeah, Bobby Keesler came from McNeese and had so much success. Mm -hmm. I, I think yeah. a lot of people were surprised. That yeah, and he was, he was at, at uh, Northeast Louisiana before <laughs> they changed the ULM. He was there That's right. through the time when they had those the national championship year mm -hmm. in 87. So he had had a lot of success before then, but you know things just didn't yeah. really go his way so and he was getting older i think he was ready to leave so ah yeah and then but, uh, charlie weatherby too. charlie weatherby was there he i finished under charlie weatherby and uh he was a good man he was a, he was a good coach but uh you know he had only during my time there he'd only had one or one or two years yeah and uh he had a little success before he got out of right. there he came to speak at the football foundation one year boy mm -hmm. i was really impressed with he was a good man he was a good christian man mm -hmm. uh, uh he worked. He worked hard at what he did, and uh, I really, I really enjoyed my time under Miss uh, Coach Weatherby. So, uh, no complaints there. Absolutely. But, well, like we say, we wanted you on because the amazing success this year, at ULM. Yes, sir. Five yeah, and one. Been <laughs> First time since winning the championship in '87. Right. So yeah, yeah. I know you have to be proud, proud of what's going on. This I year. am. I am, and uh, I haven't got to watch a whole lot this year just because you know life in general, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Watched a little bit of the James Madison game there toward the end, and uh, they're playing some good football, you know. They are. That one That one kind of surprised me because James yeah. Madison, what they did to North Carolina, right. put yeah. 70 up on them. Right. And I just assumed they were going to probably put a whipping on ULM, and I right. saw that score. I was like, wow. I think everybody yeah. was expecting that. Y yeah. But, I mean, if you look at it, the uh, take out the Texas game, they're only giving up 14 points a game. That's so amazing. Yeah. You do that. Your defense does that for you. It gives you a chance to win. So. Are you still pretty active with the? Are, are you around the program at all? Or not much. Kind of... We we do go. I take my boys. I got two boys, and uh -huh. we go over there and watch a game. Try to once a year. Okay. You know, we went last year and watched them play Southern Miss. Okay. Sat in the rain and watched that. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, I don't do much anymore. You know, it's it's been twenty years. So yeah, yeah. Kind of gotten into my own thing now, and got two boys. I'm chasing around. So <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Do too much. Let, let's go back to. Uh, Let's go back to your high school days, because Joey was telling me you were a beast in high school. So well, let's talk about what what sports did you play and all that good stuff. Well, uh, I went to AC uh -huh. all my high school years at ACCS, and uh, I played anything I could play. I was <laughs> I just loved to compete. Played it well. You know? too. <laughs> yeah. I played baseball, basketball, football, uh, track, threw the discus and the shot put, and all that, and uh, uh, played under Coach Bo Willie mm -hmm. and. Uh, that, that, we had some success, but we played in a bigger division. We played Jackson Prep, Jackson oh, Academy. Wow. Yeah. So we were a, a little bit over our head, you know, underwater there. But uh, we competed, you know, and we we had some good teams. Just uh, our, we didn't ever have a great record just because we were playing in the playing some really tough competition. But uh, but I had, you know, I have a lot of fond memories of. What positions did you play? I played in high school. Yeah, in high school. It's funny. I played <laughs> tight end. Fullback, running back, linebacker, defensive end, you know, wide receiver. You know, I, I'd play wherever they put me, you know. And <laughs> then I got to ULM, and uh, they moved me to offensive line. <laughs> and I, that's the only position I'd never played. Oh, wow. And so I basically had to start over when yeah. I got there and had to learn how to play football again. So that's where they put you? That's where you ended yeah. up playing, offensive yeah. line? Yeah, I redshirted a year and uh, put on some size and ended up starting three years and and uh, – Awesome. So it was good, but it, what uh, was the biggest adjustment going? Did you play center? I played center. Um, the biggest adjustment, well, for me personally, was obviously changing positions. Mm -hmm. You know that was tough, and uh, I came in at two forty, and uh, they recruited me as a tight end. So I came there to play tight end, and they changed their they changed their offensive scheme to like five wide. So they weren't really using a tight end. So. They were a little thin on offensive line. They said, well, you got a good frame on you. We'll put you on the line. And I put on about 30 pounds and, you know, spent a lot of time in the weight room and earned a spot. And, wow. You know, I, I started for three years. I did. I was deep snapper, too. So I did, I did start. Did you ever deep snap before that? Oh, yeah, I did in high school. Okay. Yeah. That's always amazing to me. I mean, that's a yeah. that's a skill. It's kind of like punting. Like it looks yeah. easy, but whenever you got to try to do it, believe it or not, uh, I went to a my senior year. I went to a camp at LSU, and uh, I think there was probably five hundred kids there, and there were about three of us deep snap. Wow! And uh, you know, they had it after practice. After the you know the uh, after the practice we would have, they took us all the deep snappers to the side and. They watched me and I had good time. You know, it's all about speed, you know. And uh -huh. I had good times and uh, they actually called me into Denardo's office. Uh, Jerry Denardo was the coach. Yeah. And uh, 
they were going to offer me a scholarship just to deep snap. Wow. And then he lost his job and Saban came in and that all went. <laughs> but, uh, Saban doesn't but like no, giving I, scholarships to, uh, no, any, any, any type of that. special teams. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, I was a starting deep snapper at, uh, ULM for three years. And then my senior year, they brought in a, a freshman just to deep snap, which freed me up because I was a starting center. So. So I always think about the pressure. I don't. I mean, it seems like that would be nerve wracking. Yeah. Deep, deep snap. I mean, that seems so stressful. It kind of is. <laughs> and, uh, well, the, it's funny. The first time I ever deep snapped in a game was at Florida. Oh my goodness! And in the swamp. I, in the swamp, mm. ninety something thousand people. And I, I tell people this. It's kind of a funny story. The I left AC the last game. I, I played in front of maybe two hundred people. <laughs> and then the next game I played in was at the Swamp in front of 90,000 people. And I was the backup deep snapper. And the, the starting deep snapper on the first punt of the game blew his ACL out. Oh, my goodness. So I had to finish the game. Wow. And I, I just remember I got down on the ball, I looked between my legs, and all I saw was blue and orange. I didn't <laughs> even see the punter. <laughs> so I just snapped off muscle memory and – I heard I heard him kick it, and I was like, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> You're like, "I don't care where the point goes. Yeah, yeah, so, I don't care if he kicked it backwards yeah. as long as he got it in his hand." I just remember looking back and seeing blue and orange. I didn't see the punter. I, yeah, I that's that's pretty intimidating. I'm yeah, sure to play yeah. in a place like that. That was a, that was a big a big transition there. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> and now Ron Russian's son is one of the top. He is. Snappers he is. In the I, I talked to Ron. Uh, not too long ago about his son being a deep snapper mm -hmm. and he's he's doing really yeah, well doing great yeah yeah so that he can go a long way with that yeah because it's a it's a need yeah you know? and going back to ac of course baseball uh you were a beast then how'd you get the nickname moose by the way uh i think brandon atkins threw that on me oh, and it kind of stuck surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah. i don't really remember the reason i think we were i was like a freshman or a sophomore <laughs> there. so it, it, you hit some bombs out at ac though yeah, how many home runs yeah. you end up with you know you know, I don't really remember a lot of stats. Mm -hmm. I think um, I was 10 or 12 a year for my junior okay. and senior year or something like that. And like I said, we were playing Jackson Prep, yeah. Jackson Academy, and, you know, we were facing D1 pitchers. And yeah. so, Who was your coach, baseball? Uh, well, uh, Greg Harris was uh, my coach okay. my sophomore year. And He's then, in uh, Oklahoma now. Yeah. And then we had uh, Ryan Porter was there for a year. Okay. And then uh, Chad Lipscomb was my okay. coach my senior year. Yeah. So, yeah. did you get any offers in baseball? I could have gone junior college. Okay. You know, I think I broke my grandfather's heart when I walked up when I put my glove down and went and <laughs> stayed stuck with football. But uh, you know, he wanted me to do both sports because he was like yeah. he was like me. He was a sports guy. He didn't yeah. want to do it all. You know. Uh, yeah, I, I could have do, man. Yeah, and uh, he, <clears throat> my grandfather, always hoped I'd walk on, try to walk on at ULM and and find a spot on the baseball team. But I never did. You know, I focused on. Yeah, football. So, well, learning a new position probably kept you busy, and then yeah. uh, playing center to me. Um, let's talk a little bit about what that's like for the. I'm a football fan, but if I, I don't know what it's like, but I know the center is kind of like the quarterback of the line, right? right. So, so you're learning a lot, much more than just blocking. You, right. what was that process like? The mental side of it. Well, you you spend a lot of time in the film room. You know, uh, before the game, you you learn which different defenses you're going to see. You know, and in the center, usually what we would do, I would pick out the Mike linebacker and then we would base our protection off of that. Okay. So, and for everybody watching, what's the Mike linebacker mean? Uh, he's the middle linebacker. Okay. Usually, you know, they base their coverages and all their rushes and all their blitzes off of that. Off of linebacker. that person. Okay. Yeah. So we would base our protection package off of where that linebacker was, whether he was lined up in the, you know, left, right. You know, yeah. They had okay. him split out. So, you know, there was, you know, there's a lot more detail yeah, to it yeah, that I've forgotten, yeah. but uh, yeah. but uh, yeah, that, the, the center is kind of the the quarterback of the line. You know? So the quarterback's kind of talking to the wide receivers and stuff, and you're communicating with the guys beside you. Is that how it right. works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The left guard, left, you know, all the the guards and tackles are listening to my call, so that way they know, you know, where their responsibilities lie. So that's interesting. I I noticed when. The Saints had that two and zero start. Remember way back. <laughs> yeah. Seems like forever ago yeah. now. When it, now that they've lost like thirty in a row. Yeah. But they had that great start, and their center went down. Right. And I mean, it was like immediately. I mean, as yeah. soon as the center went down, their season. Right. Yeah. And I was like, man, 
center's yeah, got to be a very important. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. And, you know, and, and the center's the only one that's got a block with, with his hand between his legs. <laughs> yes. you know, you got, that's, that's a different element, too. So you got to be pretty quick and you got to get your head up quick. And, you know, it's, it's a little different. Yeah, it seems like a tough spot to be in. You got, you got some maniac standing over you that weighs yeah. 300 pounds. And- yeah, and see, I was a small, you know, I was a smaller guy, you know. Yeah. I, I, I think my playing weight was right around 275, mm-hmm. and I was going against guys that weighed 300 pounds yeah. weekly, mm-hmm. you know, and, and my advantage was being coming from a tight end position. I had quick feet, you know, I could move. Yeah. So I didn't, you know, I actually liked the 300 pounders because I could, I could move around them. You know, it's all about leverage. Yeah. You know, and uh, I could get around them, but the guys that were close to my size, like 275, 285, those little guys that gave me trouble. <laughs> oh, that's they interesting, could, too. They could yeah. match my foot speed. Yeah. yeah. Did you so, play for Terry Moffitt any? Was he on the staff? Actually, I was uh, – Terry Moffitt was my junior, junior high coach at Cathedral. Okay. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. I, okay. I was at, yeah, I remember him at Cathedral. I was at now. Cathedral until eighth okay. grade. And uh, I play, actually played quarterback for him in eighth grade. At Cathedral. I'll be there. <laughs> Tell you a funny so, uh, Terry Moffitt story. You know, Joey Martin, who played at AC, mm-hmm. he was a – that was kind of strange. <laughs> so I'm standing there and Coach Moffat. The athletic me. Joey Martin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing there at the game, and uh, he's the head coach. Joey didn't do much wrong at all, but he was supposed to be on the field and wasn't. And Coach Moffat screamed. You've heard him scream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Joey Martin. About that time, I dropped my clipboard. And I did <laughs> Looking for a way out. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you were in trouble. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Joey, me, we became good friends then, and he's a great guy. He, he was he was a beast as well. Yeah, I remember mm-hmm. hearing stories about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, go ahead. You want to get? Yeah, uh, yeah. Just your thoughts on the NIL and college football today. Uh as a former player, I kind of wish it was there when I was. There. <laughs> uh, Look, so. we we had one guy that I'll let you answer. We had one guy that came in. Uh, uh, was from Faraday um, is my coach at um, Oh Devontae. The, no, Devante? no, the basketball coach. Oh, mine. oh, uh, Sean Gray. Sean, yeah, Sean Davis. Sean, da- Coach yeah. Davis. Uh, my mind's slipping me. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and he played basketball for Oklahoma State. And Joey asked him that question. And he he went on this rant about how he didn't like it and this and that. And he said, "Do you wish you had it whenever y'all played?" Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would have took it in a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought yeah. it was funny. He went on this long rant about yeah. not being good. Yeah. Oh yeah, I would have loved it. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead, though. I, I'm sorry. I just I don't really care for it. I I think it's changing the game. Yeah, you know, for and sure. I, I hate you know it, and I hate it for the for the coaches mainly because you you spend all this time recruiting a kid and you bring him in, you put a couple years into him and developing him, and the next thing you know he's heading to greener pastures, you know, so it's, it's, uh, I hope they put some sort of regulation on it or some kind of control structure on it somehow. I don't, I don't know how they're going to do it, but I'm yeah. not a real big fan. I'm a, I'm a huge college football fan mm-hmm. and I just, it seems like the wild, wild west. Right? It does seem like that's probably the best explanation of yeah. it is the wild, wild west. Yeah. Uh, and I think we're starting to see it on the field. You're starting to see these teams, obviously Alabama struggling, um, mm-hmm. I mean, they're five and two or whatever, but you know, struggling. <laughs> struggling. But, but, um, but I think you're starting to see some of these teams that were three deep. They're having the same problems now yeah. because those guys they're not going to sit the bench anymore. They could they could right. go play. They can right. go to UL ULM or whatever and say, "Hey, yeah. I'm starting here, and, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm still getting paid and all of that." So, yeah. um, let's talk a little bit about some of the places that you play, like uh, road games and stuff like that. You mentioned uh, the swamp. So yeah, we we played. I think two SEC schools a year. So Florida, Tennessee. Um, now Auburn. That played was Auburn. 73 to 7, right? You forgot about that real quick. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think Tennessee like, was 70 God. to 7, too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't remember the scores. Yeah. But I do remember the experience. Yeah, I, I played Ole Miss, yeah. too, didn't you? We played Ole Miss when Eli was there. So okay. that was cool. Uh, played, at, played at LSU. Okay. Uh, played Arkansas a couple times. So, what are some of the stadiums that stood out to you? Well, the first one, the one that really stood out to me was Tennessee, and uh, that was because I was a redshirt freshman. I just got to travel with the team. I wasn't going to play. Okay. And I think I stood around like this the whole time, <laughs> never even watched the game, just being they had in Rocky awe. top going in your head. Yeah, all like I said, right? six months before I was at AC, so it's a little. It's now a little you different. have a hundred and it was, it was over a hundred thousand people yeah. there that day. Yeah. 
So yeah, that that one really stands out. And uh, of course, Tiger Stadium, it was fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, Arkansas is pretty cool. You know, they they were still kind of building on at that time, but uh, yeah, there was a it was awesome, but some awesome environments. Yeah. Something uh, a small town guy like me would never expect <laughs> to do. So. Who was the LSU coach whenever it was that Saban? Yeah, I believe it. Whenever y'all I believe were. it was Saban. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was made a lot of good memories, met a lot of good people, and it was it was a great experience, you know. Yeah, I can only imagine walking in as a as an opponent in some of those stadiums. I mean, I think as fans, we're like just like LSU this week. They're like, oh, they should beat A and M, and I'm like, man, this there's no easy wins. Like, no, I mean, no. I hear Tiger fans going, oh, well, they got it. I'm like, man, walking into any stadium, yeah, is tough. It I mean, is. looking around, and uh. The crowd plays a factor for sure. Do, yeah. do, does the crowd? I mean, oh. as as a player, when you're on there, yeah, I mean, is it hard to hear? Like like yeah. you see, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's 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 hard to hear. You know, you you really got to, and that's where you know all the time and the practice and the film study comes in. You know, you almost learn how to run plays without verbal communication. You know, and that's just repetition, repetition. And that's another discipline for an offensive lineman having to. I mean, because those defensive linemen sometimes are moving around, and mm -hmm. I'm sure they're doing little tricks to try to make you jump. And... Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could tell you some stories about defensive linemen, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's the best one that you feel like you went who, who gave you fits the most? Uh, you know, believe it or not, there was a guy at North Texas. North Texas was Sunbelt uh -huh. at that hmm. time, and uh, he was about 300 pounds, and he was about 5'11". I can't even remember his name now, but I played him three years in a row. So we knew each other pretty yeah. well. And, uh, but he played point guard in high school. So you can imagine how quick he wow. was for a 300 pound guy. Golly. And I'm telling you my sophomore and junior year, he owned me, <laughs> you know, he, he worked me over, but my senior year, I finally figured him out. You got it. <laughs> and managed to keep him under control. But, uh, but yeah, uh, of course, you know, Auburn had a great nose guard that one year we played him. uh, I think LSU had a good nose guard, so but but it was the the guys that you played more than once, you know, yeah. the conference guys. Yeah, kind of got yeah. to know them a little bit and had those little personal battles going on. So, so like with that guy, did you kind of build a little relationship with him? Like, yeah, uh, it wasn't a good one. Yeah, <laughs> we weren't we weren't each other. Y'all weren't having fans, dinner. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you uh, weren't taking him over to uh, to Waterfront Grill. No, no, <laughs> See Sam no. over there. No, yeah, uh, <laughs> you know we we both uh, we battled. Yeah, know, so it, but it was good. You know, he he made me better, and hopefully I made him better. So. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what was the highlight? Did any game stick out? Uh. No, there was a handful. We had a, a couple of overtime wins that were a lot of fun, you know, and uh, for an offensive lineman, the highlights are a little different. You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, if, you, if you make the highlight, that means you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, as an offensive lineman, you know, you love those long drives where you get to run the ball a lot and you really Oh, yeah. Uh, but I did. I joke around with some people sometimes. I did have a – I did. I went there to play tight end, and I finally – before I got out of there, I got a reception. Oh, wow. Did you? I did, as a center. <laughs> we, we, threw, we threw a pass over the middle, and uh, I was blocking my guy, and he ended up going one way, and so I was waiting on the ball to release so I could go block downfield. Well, he threw it right in front of me, and I, it like came right by my ear, so I saw the ball. Well, the receiver went to catch it, and the linebacker hit him in the back. The ball popped up in the air, and just out of instinct, I dove and caught it. <laughs> So You're I like, had, here's my time. I went to ULM to catch passes. And I just catch one. <laughs> so, uh, who was your quarterback then? Um, my the one that I really liked that I played the most with was Stephen Giles. Okay, uh, yeah. he was out of Baton Rouge, and he he ended up going and playing uh, Canadian football for a little while. Uh -huh. But he was a good guy, really good athlete, good quarterback. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, we we had uh, one or two before that that didn't play as much as him, but but he's the one that I have made the most memories with. Yeah, so. and you had a defensive back Harris. Who, yeah, Chris Harris. He, he played with the, the Bears yeah. uh, for a little while. He that guy there. He he was a, he came in the same year as I did, and uh, when we first reported, we had to run a mile. And the cut and that was just kind of like a measuring stick. Yeah, I just want to see. All right, are they in shape? <laughs> and he came in and ran like a five minute mile. 
Wow. And dude, could, he could play the piano. Just huh. super talented guy. Wow. One of those and, guys uh, you just like, crap, man. This guy does everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he could do it. You, yeah. you know, he could do it all. And, and, but he was he was a good, humble, grounded yeah. guy. Good, And he went on to play several years in the NFL. And there was a couple other guys. Uh, we had a run. Well, when I was there, he was a running back, uh, Kevin Payne. <clears throat> and he ended up going and playing for the uh, in the NFL for a few years, uh, but as a safety. Yeah. Yeah. After I left, they moved him to defense, and he ended up excelling in defense. Huh. Uh, but he was super athletic, and that's one thing that was shocking to me too when I when I got to that level. You know, at AC, like Joey said, I was a multiple sport athlete, mm-hmm. and you know, I was doing really well in every sport. And then I got to ULM and I was looking around and like, these guys <laughs> are some kind of athletic, yeah. you know, it's a whole different level. Yeah. Uh, even at that smaller college level, yeah. the guys that come into those programs are really, really athletic. Oh yeah. No, no doubt about that. It's a, it's a step up for sure. Um, Joey, I'll let you get the last question, but before uh, that, I, my last question is basically just give you a chance to talk about where you are now and, you mentioned your boys and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we live here in Natchez, and uh, I got a seventh grader and a fifth grader, and they're very active young men. They play f- football, baseball, okay. you know, and uh, my wife's a school teacher. At, uh, she teaches at AC. Okay. So uh, everything's going really good, and, you know, and really, really blessed and, you know, have no complaints. Yeah. The Lord's taking good care of me, so. So your boys keep you busy, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> they remind me all the time that I'm in my 40s. You know? <laughs> they get me out there and make me play ball with them and it takes me a couple of days to recover. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's hard to bounce back as yeah. you, get, as you yeah. put a little age on. But, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they're keeping me young, and, I, you know, I, I love spending time with them. And, yeah. You know, you know, fortunately, I can do that. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really – we're good. Everything's yeah. going really good. That's yeah. awesome, man. Joey, I'll let did, you get this out Did you play there. tech back then? Never did play tech. Okay. You That's know. quite a rivalry too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I always assumed we would, you know, being so close yeah. in proximity, but we never did play them. I don't know why. Uh, final question. Uh, of course, we got AC Cathedral tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> did you ever play against Cathedral baseball or football? We never played them in football. Mm-hmm. I don't think we played them in baseball really? either. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they were uh, in the parochial system at that well, that's time. That's right. That's right. So, they were. Yeah. And we were at MPSA, so you know, we never did play them. So, uh, How special is it playing somebody, a kid, you know, people you know, and it, it's it's fun. Yeah. You know, it adds another element to it. You know, you get, you know, you get bragging rights for a year. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, that's right. Yeah, it's, it's, As Coach Fairclaws used to say, "Well, our kids can walk around the Natchez Mall this week." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it's fun, and you know, a lot of you know, you know, like my boys, they they play against uh, Cathedral and AYA, and of course. Uh, my oldest son's in junior high now, so they play cathedral. Okay. So they go to church together. They play baseball in the summers right. together. So, you know, they get to have a little fun, play each other. and uh, Talk a little smack. Talk a little smack. Yeah, that's walk, right. You know, they get to walk around with their chest poked out for a little while. That's right. So, yeah, it's, it's fun for them, I think. You know, yeah. We never did get, get to play them when I was there. Mm-hmm. But like I said, we, we played, you know, a lot of those guys I played with, you know, during the summers, you mm-hmm. know. And, Tra- you know, travel ball, things like that. So, you know, just never did get square off on, on the football field. Huh. Okay. <laughs> well, Joe, you got anything else? That's about it. Well, man, yep. hey, we appreciate you coming hey, in. We'll, uh, y'all having me. We'll, we'll be right back with uh, to wrap the show up after a quick break. Hey, y'all, it's Ronnie and Shannon with Miss Lou Champion Spotlight. And we want to tell you about our awesome partner, J.E. Hicks Distributing Company, also known as, as Hicks Chicks. Chicks. Hicks Chicks is a local, family-owned food distribution company that has been serving the Miss Lou since 1945. You already know they serve all of your favorite restaurants, but did you know that they are also open to the public? Hicks Chicks has a variety of food products, including delicious heat and eat options like chicken and dumplings, white bean chicken chili, lasagna, and gumbo. They also carry a wide variety of seafood options like shrimp, crabs, tuna steaks, salmon, and catfish. And don't forget about their delicious burgers that are already patted up for you and their amazing dessert options. So stop by today at 1380 Martin Luther King Jr. Road in Natchez. Hicks Chicks. Way more than just chicken.
Hey guys, Ronnie Calhoun here with Miss Lou Champion Spotlight, and I want to tell you about our awesome partners, Wardo's Po' Boys. Wardo's was created in honor of Alan Ward Granning III, finally known by family and friends as Wardo. In 2019, the oldest brother of the tribe passed away unexpectedly. His remaining siblings and loved ones wanted to honor his memory in a special way. In 2022, Ward's family decided to combine the need for a sandwich shop in downtown Natchez with a desire to pay tribute to Ward's love of good friends, good times, and great food. Through blood, sweat, tears, and countless hours of hard work, Wardo's was born. So go visit Wardo's today at 309 North Broadway Street in Natchez, where the po' boys are so good, you'll swear you're in Cajun country. We want to tell you about our awesome partners, Cyber Technology, Greg Vet Clinic, Hicks Chicks, Kenny Chesney's Blue Cherry Bay Rum, and all of our awesome partners that you see on the screen right now. Make sure to do business with them and tell them Miss Lou Champion sent you. All right, guys, we are back. We want to say thank you to Hayden Wadsworth. That was a great interview, man. Awesome. Yeah, it was great meeting that guy. Um, Can you imagine being from HCCS and your first game in college is at Florida? And yeah, that's that's something. That was he had some great stories. That's funny looking between his legs and saying <laughs> blue and orange. <laughs> um, we'll keep this. We'll keep keep it short today, but. We just kind of we never got to talk about the LSU Ole Miss game, which was a. Um, I, I have to eat crow because I, I thought I, I said I, I thought that um, Ole Miss was going to win by ten plus. But kudos to LSU's defense; they really started. I mean, coming around three quarters, we looked right. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, Ole Miss left a lot of points Ooh. on the on the board, off the board on um, in the first quarter. Yeah, it could have really gotten. Yeah, ugly quick, but hey, that's football, man. You got to capitalize. And who would have expected Whit, Whit Weeks when he's done and that defense to improve and, as much as it has? And I said on our last show, um, I said Kiffin will do some boneheaded things. He will leave points You're right. on the field, You're right. but you got to make him pay on those on those fourth downs and all of that. Yeah, um, there were multiple times that he he probably would like to have the decision back mm -hmm. that that he. Uh, would probably change, but um, but he's an aggressive guy and he wins a lot because of it too. But yeah, LSU is coming around, man. Yeah, their big game this week with uh, Texas A and M, yeah, who's also a surprise. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one, man. Uh, two undefeated in the SEC and only two, on, the only two, yeah. And <clears throat> College Station's a tough place to play. I mean. It's it's a it's a tough environment to play in. It is. It's a it's a pretty heated rivalry with right. LSU and A and M. They've got some interesting things. How do you say how do you say the game playing out? Uh, you know, I hate to pick against LSU two yeah. weeks in a row, mm -hmm. but um, I mean that's gonna be a tough one at A and M. Like you're yeah. playing as well as they're playing. And and you i I'm just keep remembering how LSU looked earlier in the year and I'm thinking, man, that's how long is this gonna last? But and you know now their opponents are going. Oh, we got to take them serious. Yeah, yeah. So I don't was at LSU. I would pick LSU, but being at A and M, I'd have to go with A and M. That's kind of how I am. I think it's kind of a pick 'em game, depending on where where it's played. And I would probably say A and M by a couple points, maybe mm -hmm. if I had to set the line. But um, thank good goodness we don't do that anymore. But <laughs> exactly. But uh, but I hope you know. And I, look, LSU could go in there and win. There's no yeah. question about it. Um, it just depends on who plays better on on Saturday, but man, kudos to the defensive staff. Absolutely. I don't think I've seen a defense. Now we may give up nine hundred yards this week, but I don't think I've ever seen a defense improve this much especially in a short period of time, especially with two with major, yeah. two of their superstars right. being out. But look, sometimes that helps. I yeah. mean, you hate to say it, but sometimes. But you've had guys step up. So sometimes, you know, whenever you have stars on the team, everybody's kind of worried about right. them and this and that. And sometimes whenever you remove them, 
everybody just feels free and right. they're like, okay, let's just go play ball. It's kind of like when you got the mm-hmm. sharpshooter in basketball. Exactly. The guys just stand there and look. Mm-hmm. Then he's gone and you, hey, we got it. Major Burns has been just. He stepped up, man. Yeah. He took a he took some abuse. I mean, yeah. from the fans and, and and on the field too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, credit to him for hanging in there and look. I mean, he's the best we got. Yeah. So I mean, he's got to step up and and do it. And the uh, the the freshman running back, man, uh, yeah, Caden Durham, Durham. Yeah. and I mean, he's he's something. He so is. um, I don't know. It'll be interesting. We okay. just have to keep rolling, and I'm 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 hoping that they can pull it off. If they pull this one off, it's going to be a very interesting game against. Uh, I think Bama's next week. Yeah, so. yeah, they have an open week. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anything else you want to get to? I got to mention something. Uh, <clears throat> you know, for all these years, Nick Saban talked about rat poison. <laughs> you guys, you give a lot of rat poison that our kids listen to and the fans listen to. And and what does he do now? This year, he's with the media. <laughs> he says, "Well, Vanderbilt's the least place you have to worry about playing." <laughs> and now he's saying. Our guys got up for Tennessee more than Auburn. What? What are you? That's rat poison. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. getting Auburn all fired up for the game war. Yeah, um, it's just now he sees. Funny how, now he sees the other side exactly. of it. Exactly. Um, but it's fun watching him and seeing how much fun he's having. Oh yeah, and I, um, I was telling somebody the other day, if if I'm trying to describe college football to somebody and and what makes it so great, fifty years from now, I'm going to say one time. Vanderbilt fans carried a goalpost down Broadway for for two and a half, three miles, and threw it in the river, like in the Cumberland River. <laughs> I mean, that's the most college football thing of all time. That's what makes that's what makes college football so great. Um, so pros are good and all that, but you just don't oh, see that. Pros, man, no, that, that was unbelievable. Who who would ever thought we would live to see Vandy beat at Alabama? Never, <laughs> never. But. Um, Anything else you want to get That's to it. before we Just get out of here? Good luck and good health tomorrow and tonight for all our football teams. And yeah. Looking yep. forward to being back next week. I think we're going to try to get Jake on next week. Yeah, uh, that'd be awesome. Talk about um, Delta Charter playing St. Fred. He follows them a lot. So Yeah, yeah, that'll be awesome. We'll, we'll get Dustin to do his magic for us. Uh, Get our, like only Dustin can. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, we're going to let you get out of here and practice your uh, LL Cool J impersonations uh, a little bit more. And, you got it. Uh, and, and your Stevie Wonders and all that. But uh, all right, guys. Well, we appreciate the uh, we appreciate the viewers uh, uh, for watching. We, appre- we appreciate uh, Hayden for coming on this morning. Great interview with him, man. I really enjoyed that. Thank you to everybody out there. Thank you to all of our partners. We say it every week, but we can't do what we do without our partners. So thank you. Do business with them. Tell them thank you for helping us do what we do in the community. Um, Just God bless everybody out there. And as always, have a champion day. (laughs) Play to win our $50,000 Ace of Spades Progressive with drawings every Friday and Saturday through November 2nd. Score big wins at Magnolia Bluffs Casino Hotel. It's always a good time. Visit magnoliabluffscasino.com.